Fast Lane, Ryan O'Connor, John Williams. Hello and welcome back to another episode as we Ooh. shoot the breeze once a week uh, on all things that are happening in the world of motorsport, all things that are happening in the world of motoring, uh, and all things that are happening, just happening in the Cape Town and the Western Cape in South Africa. Uh, from the sporting front, uh, we're busy losing to the New Zealand down under, mate. Oh, no, Pretty mate. Good. In the cricket, but that's about the only thing that's going mm. down in the world at the moment. I met Drickus Duplessis last weekend. Like I was the many, very many jealous that you got to hang out and meet him. South Africans, I got to meet Drickus. And? Yeah, he a lecker guy. I mean, you had a nice event. I mean, that was the cricket, the T20. You yeah. got to hang out with the who's who there. Tell me, said, who was I hanging out him, in that box? Drickus, I said to him, Drickus, just, he, my mate said, just one picture, just one. one. Oh, he says, yeah, oh, Binks. You see, because it's just one for you, <laughs> but not for me. For me, I get it all the time. Oh. Like, yeah, it must be tough being a world champion, mate. Magalamu. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember ever going to go watch um, Paro in the Western Cape has a Paro Center? Yeah, right? yeah. The Civic Center. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They still have wrestling on there. They have actually martial arts that you can go watch boxing. You can go watch wrestling. Local heroes really? go and they're made at Paro Civic Center. Oh. You can see Voter Dicker Boater yeah. versus John from Avalon. The and, Paro. and they got massive support there. Yeah, I believe it's quite big. Yeah. And they go and they, they bring those garden chairs. You know the white garden <laughs> stool chairs? The, the, the number <laughs> one item of furniture in South Africa for gardens is the white garden chair you're not going to believe me I actually have been to one of these events and you know what the best part is when they shout Makalamuch no Makalamuch where the spectators get to wrestle they have a half time where they go in and the guys go and yes it's it's brilliant spectators get to wrestle yeah it's like a half-time entertainment. You step right up and uh, you, you, have go, to, you have to go do the thing. Yo, and the brandy thinking, specials are like thinking, 40 bucks, I think. That's expensive. That's well, for two brandies. Listen, when last that's have you, for, when last, yeah, it's probably for two Paro, brandies. A double, it's double 20 special. bucks a double brandy. And Happy hour, all Hang hours. On, but but when we both are in the para region, so we <laughs> mustn't be that. This I'm is all hood. I'm all Bielville. It's our hood. Now, they're saying that Drickus wants to see the fight happen at Loftus Fasfalt. Okay. Okay. I thought Loftus. you were going to say at Goodwood Pins. No. Okay. But can you imagine the parking lot? <laughs> the, fight, the fights before the main fight. Gee. Can you imagine the warm up fights? I'm down here on the side of the field here. We've got a warm up fight. It's Fricky from Fontaine versus Yanaman from uh, 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 whatever. And they, they both, they're going to get their fights pre oh. in the parking lot. Yeah. At Loftus before the main fight. Yes, so you're going to have to come with your scrum cap on exactly. just to support the match. Uh, it would be awesome to have an event here, though. A lot of people are asking where the big celebrities on the show are because we talk motor racing. So let's get one on the line. In actual fact, yes. it, it was a, there was a couple uh, of people we wanted to get hold of and call today. I want to try and get hold of very quickly, uh, get hold of a dear friend of both of ours. In actual mm. fact, give us the backstory to where you, when you first met him, uh, was he, because he was first in, am I right in saying he was first in rally before he then moved no. on to doing, wh- where did you meet South African Dakar legend, Janil de Villiers? So Janil was actually a, a touring car driver. He came up through, through circuit racing. I was very fortunate enough as a youngster to hang around the track and watch these greats like himself and many others, you know, Dion Jabe, who we've spoken about, my yeah. uncle, Steve Windham. Uh, Janil was sort of a younger driver coming through. And I mean, touring cars back in the day, everybody wanted to watch touring cars. It was just... Kalani, um, you couldn't even get a spot if you didn't come early. The cars were so spectacular, very close racing. So he made his name driving in the touring cars in under Nissan with Glenn Hall, who now many many years later, you know, has run a very successful Dakar Toyota team. Absolutely. So they partnered up. But in between that, you know, Janil uh, driven for many different manufacturers, and I mean, he made the transition from track to rallying very quickly. And I got to compete against him uh, at a rally, uh, South African Rally Championship. Was he a good rally driver? He was very good rally driver mm. obviously very difficult because not a lot of the guys could transition from track to rallying but he did he adapted very quickly and a lot of the guys that came from track racing bought that finesse and that speed to rallying so um, which was great up the level all right let's get a hold of him um and speaking Ryan. of the devil oh, there we go there he is ladies and gentlemen uh janil de villiers back in cape town after yet another grueling dakar uh, janil mate how are you doing Good, finding yourself, man. Yeah, Lekka, we can't complain. Uh, John and I are, are thinking, John's just explaining to me on this podcast of ours about when he first met you and his involvement. Janil, do you remember the first time you met John Williams? Yeah, that was quite a few years ago. Um, time, time flies. Uh, it was back somewhere 
at a race circuit. We were racing, we're doing track racing back then, and obviously John did some rallying as well. So yeah. it's between track and rallying where I, where I met John, but that's many, many, many years ago. Yeah, we're getting a lot older now. Eh? And I was saying to Ryan, I mean, at, back in the day with the touring cars as a youngster, watching that was so spectacular. I mean, you know, the guys who had the best drivers in the country racing in all different manufacturers, it was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Those were basically the golden years of, of racing in South Africa. I mean, mm. when I started, I was very fortunate to to start in that era. Um, you know, in the 90s when touring cars were actually absolutely, absolutely at their their best. Um, you know, we had full fields of race cars. We had uh, sure. race tracks. Um, you know, filled with people. Kalani filled with 30,000 people. Kai Lami full mm. to the brim. And yeah, just just wonderful days and, and great memories. Absolutely. Uh, Janelle, you barely, barely recovering after another grueling Dakar. And my favorite thing to see is seeing you in December. I don't know, for some other reason, we always seem to see each other in December before you've got to go to Dakar. And the one thing I always say to you is, Janelle, while you are grueling and while you are t- uh, tackling the toughest terrain on earth, many South Africans are drinking loads of beer, drinking loads of wine, eating Christmas Correct. and going crazy. It's the busiest time of the year for you. Yeah, it's always very difficult, you know. That time of the year, everybody's in a festive mood and everybody wants to party and drink beers and, and champagne, like you say, which is all good and all nice. But, uh, you know, that time of the year, I've got to make sure that I'm as fit as I can be, you know, obviously uh, not have too many beers. But I must say, you know, after a, a hard cycle, four or five hour ride, sure. I always have one beer at least <laughs> because it's cold beer then. <laughs> And tell me, Janil, I mean, I, you know, I obviously, Ryan always laughs because I never miss a night of the highlights. And I, you know, I get so excited watching and seeing the South Africans do yeah. so well. But tell me, I mean, the pace seems tremendous. Sure. I mean, you know, you guys are racing over such a long distance. But I mean, has over the years, I mean, you've been doing it for a long time. The pace just seems to be extremely quick, you know, over these kilometers that you guys are competing in. Yeah, it's actually crazy, John. I mean, the, the, nowadays the pace is so fast I and mean, it's so high. I mean, it, it, it's become sort of a sprint race, yeah. uh, basically, you know, and... Um, it's just insane. I mean, you have to be there yourself. It's just insane that the speed the guys are going at now. And obviously the cars are, you know, uh, really, really good. We've got big 37-inch tires. And, and the speed that you can go over, you know, the uneven terrain that we have in the Dakar is just unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly very, very high pace. And I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to compete against Nassel here. And I mean, like you say, he's definitely up the pace. But as also the terrain, I mean, he's a he's a dune guru. I mean, has the race become more a dune type of race? Whereas before you had a bit more rally stages in between. It seems to be 90% dunes. Well, I mean, they certainly put in a lot of dunes. And in, in uh, this, uh, you know, this year there, there was quite a lot of dunes. But I mean, it also depends on, on you know, where you race. So... Um, in South America, for instance, we had a lot more uh, rally stages because it's just, you know, the way the country is. Um, yeah. But uh, in Saudi Arabia, certainly there are quite a lot of dunes. But, you know, we have a lot more open desert in, in Saudi Arabia and, um, you know, very little road. So you tend to spend quite a bit of time off-road. Um, and, you know, that's that's off-road through rocks or off-road through the dunes. Um but yeah, I mean, it's it's there, there were a lot of dunes back in when I did the race in Africa as well. So yeah. you you adjust to that. Um, but you know, like you say, a guy like NASA is extremely good at reading um, that open desert type terrain. Mm. And I mean, also the big manufacturers that are getting involved now. I mean, that's also sure. it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you got Audi, and I see now there's a new is a Dacia that's come on board and uh, stealing drivers. So I mean, that's also big budgets in this racing. I always try and tell Ryan, you know, it's a, it's such an expensive sport to go and uh, play in the dunes. Yeah, crazy. I mean, uh, those guys, you know, guys like Audi and those have got huge, huge budgets to uh, to do the race. Unfortunately, they are. Uh, it, it was their last Dakar. Uh, sure. They're not going to be back mm. next year. But um, Darcia is there, and they belong to Renault. So they there with a three-year program, as far as I understand, um, with Sebastian Loeb and, and, and NASA. So mm. that's going to be interesting. But I mean, there's there's always new manufacturers sure. looking at, at the race. Um, 
and and looking at, at taking up the challenge. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's good for the sport. It's great for the sport. And you know, obviously, like you know, the more manufacturers you have in a in a series, the better. Absolutely. And you you happen to have one of the better manufacturers. I'll tell you why. Because in South Africa, I think no bigger manufacturer uh, of any uh, vehicle is uh, is is bigger. I think than Toyota in South Africa. And the nicest thing is, uh, Janil, you give a lot of oaks that have bought double cabs. <laughs> uh, they 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 their optimism as to how they can handle the roads and off-road conditions in South Africa in those double cab buckies. You've given them this massive level of optimism. Uh, I think you make every single Toyota owner in South Africa really proud that they're driving that double cab Hilux. Yeah, look, I mean, Toyota, we, we all know it's the, it's the biggest brand in the world and uh, you know, it's great to be driving for a, for a manufacturer like them and I've sure. been with them now for, I think, just on 12 years. Mm. But uh, yeah, with the Hilux uh, that we we've taken to the deck on now uh, the last uh, you know how many years uh, we've achieved achieved great success and you know we've won the race three times as a mm. team uh, with NASA. But yeah, I couldn't have chipped in there and got a win myself, but I got a second or two second places. Yes. Um, but uh, no, for sure. I mean, it's it's a huge brand, and um, I mean you could see uh, just just in South Africa because the Hilux is such a big, such a big brand here yes. that. Uh, their support and um, you know all the guys. You get all the guys excited, and they, they talk about the race and their highlights and yeah. you know oh, yeah. highlights with their cross stickers on the back. And, <laughs> you know the whole lot. Uh, exactly. It's all good. It is. Uh, Janelle, listen. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Also, just a huge thanks. I think locally, people don't know that you're on a mountain bike and a road bike that's got specialised all over it. And we both uh, know Bobby very well and the team that support you to keep you fit yeah. throughout the course of the year. Uh, I mean, the guys out in uh, in Stellenbosch are phenomenal. To Bobby. Bobby and his team out there, uh, the best bike manufacturer in the world that keeps Janil basically uh, a, a fit and ready yeah. for the next Dakar. Absolutely. You know, you can't do these things without these sponsors. And, you know, I've been with Specialized for, for years by giving me the bikes. Um, Red Bull has been a sponsor Bull, of mine for years yeah. as well. So, you know, without these guys, you cannot do things like this. So huge thanks to them. And, you know, a huge thanks to, to guys like you, you know, which which put us out there and, and, oh, and stunning, all mate. the support there all your listeners for all the support brilliant thanks very much Janil thanks mate thanks, we chat Janil. soon cool man thanks cheers Janil ciao bye 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 cheers uh, Janil de Villiers Dakar winner 20 consecutive yep, finishes exactly. for Janil de Villiers in the Dakar that's quite something in what itself what a lecker oak no, he is I'm just going to type him a thank you while, while he's on there I think we need to go ride mountain bike with him, Ryan. You need to get that bike off-road. Janil's a phenomenal mountain and biker Bobby, too. Bobby, if you're watching, Bobby. Bobby, yeah. I'm coming to visit you, Bobby. I haven't seen you in a while. Well, EJ and I are coming to visit you, Bobby. <laughs> We're coming to get some bikes from you. We're going to go cycle in the mountains Sounds and look for amazing. leprechauns. <laughs> um, and listen, from, from Janil de Villiers and local South African legends, we're going to touch base with the oh, van der who oh, are abroad. They're down under um, at the moment they're too. They're down under mine. Batters. Oh, it's one of the most spectacular tracks to drive on. I've been mm. following their process and the progress throughout the last couple of weeks. They're both racing. That's going to be exciting. So we'll definitely get both of them uh, on the show at some point. But that circuit is like uh, mm. everybody wants to drive. It's like a bucket list, bucket list tick Absolutely. for them. You know? uh, we wish Eddie Jordan all the very best on a speedy recovery. Mm. Uh, our friend has had a little bit of a ear up. Uh, good news, just a very, very quick ear up. Uh, he's back on his feet. Uh, Eddie's been asking to be a part of this podcast. He's got his own podcast. So uh, we'll see if we can squeeze. Uh, so we put him in. Jordan in some, <laughs> somewhere uh, during the course of the Formula One season that's coming yeah. up soon um, and that'll be great to get him and his thoughts and, uh, and you know the nice thing about EJ is he's always shooting from the hip he, he calls it as it is he's yeah. got no reason to impress anybody he says it as he, as he sees it yeah. uh, and so it's lucky to pick his brain we'll chat to him uh, coming up and then the biggest possible name in motorsport globally uh, the name that's associated with the biggest sport ever will be on this podcast as well uh, I can't wait to, to talk talk a little bit more about that's that that's going to be exciting in the upcoming weeks uh, just in terms of things on the go you and I are both in uh, Porsche McCann's yes big weekend for the for Porsche owners they'll be out at uh, um, a track day at Kalani for most of the yeah, day driver at training on Saturday and then Patina we have the breakfast run and we're going out to Malmesbury sort of that side and then coming back and having uh, lunch at Patina so that's going to be nice it's like the Sol Kersner of the restaurant world Ryan yes. Richens is like the Sol Kersner of the restaurant world, if it's a if it's another Puptine is opening up or a, 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 a copper club, a, what are they Terrace. called? Patina. 
patina. Did I call yeah. it a puptina? I'll act like I didn't hear that. Okay, patina, botany, the terrace. You name it. Uh, you name it. Copper clubs, those are all a part of the mogul that is Ryan Richards. Yes. Ryan, if you're watching, uh, play us in your restaurants, please. We need the Fast Lane <laughs> podcast going out and vlog going out to everybody we can. But Ryan's establishments are yeah. incredible. I've known Ryan for donkey's years and uh, he really is uh, a restaurateur of note. Uh, the Porsche Club run, as you said, ends at, but at botany, yeah. uh, that whole area, the terrace uh, this coming yeah, Sunday. 60 plus cars are going to be really good. We also have been driving some top se- secret cars this past week. Shh. I know, it's so hard for me to keep a secret, but you know what was nice for me is they're still building cars that are oh. just a little bit outrageous. You know, four yeah. tailpipes, um, not a hybrid, mm. petrol, mm. three litre, twin turbo, that's all I can say, but you. spectacular to drive. And the whole highway to myself, I think I'm so spoilt that I get, we got rolling cutoffs on the N1 and N2, four o'clock in the morning, and I'm just flat out, and I've got that Porsche Cayenne uh, GTS chasing me with a camera on it. Yeah. It's just awesome That's precision lovely. driving. So yeah, very lucky. We're very spoiled on the roads we have here in Cape Town. We'll reveal what brand and what car it is yes. uh, in the course of the next Ooh. couple of weeks as well. Some exciting yeah, things happening. Uh, what else is exciting? I uh, know. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing some stuff with uh, Porsche. Porsche. Oh yes, Porsche They're coming down. Uh, listen, and also I've got to say a couple of people who are uh, who who are going to get involved with the show. A huge thanks mm. um, to Melon Mobile. Melon Mobile. If you don't know who they're on what they're about we can explain exactly yeah. over the next couple of weeks who they are and what they're about also to one bet uh to Vili and to garth and we introduce you to uh who they are and the products that they have two very exciting brands uh one brand new the other one been around for a while but watch the space big things happening mm. as we uh, count down the weeks to the samola hill climb unveiling of the car i can't wait to do that unveiling of the car on this um vlog as well we're going to show you what the cars look like in their full livery oh or livery, whichever livery. one you want to call it. Yeah. Um, also want to just say to uh, our friends out at Roller Luxury Collection, to Brandon and his team once again uh, mm. for supplying us some wheels to have a look at over the course of the uh, of the week. Uh, we're both in McCann's and so oh, it's, it's, a, so cool. it's a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. It is. Both under a million rand. One's just a shade over 900, the other one a shade over 800 uh, for two phenomenal McCann's. One with 10,000 yeah. on the clock, one with 30,000 on the clock uh, and both of them phenomenal cars. Speaking of cars, we'll be back with more cars in the fast lane, more talk about what's happening uh, in the world of motorsport they were uh, just very quickly formula one seen mm. at seen a whole lot of their cars revealed for me i'm never get excited when they say this is the new sf24 i look at it i'm going it looks just like the sf23 uh, yeah. but with one or two little slight mod, there's some mod there's spirit. already mercedes coming out and they're saying oh is that front wing legal is it yeah. not so i love that side of things but yeah i agree with you uh, not much difference between the cars but there's wrc sweden coming up there's so much action i mean i can't mm. wait for motor gp to start yeah. liveries that are coming out and and uh, every manufacturer looks like a Ducati now to compete against See, the Italian. While you get excited team. about cars, I get excited about watches, right? So Breitling and the owners, mm-hmm. uh, Georges, uh, Georges Kern, uh, they've just bought Universal Genève, uh, which for me is the same Watch as, for space. example, Porsche buying, um, I'm just trying to think of one I can compare it to. Uh, you see, it would have to be a non-existent car manufacturer. It doesn't make cars anymore. But they- What they, does that mean? What is, uh, cause I'm lost. This so is they your bought, world. And they've bought another brand of watch. Okay. Which is a, a phenomenal brand. Oh, wow. And Breitling have gone and they've purchased Universal Genève, oh, uh, nice. which is a phenomenal. So in the next, course of the next three, four years, we're gonna see new oh, watches. Nice. Uh, built from a back catalogue of the most incredible uh, bits of virology in the world, watches from watch. Universal Genève. Okay. So is it like a sporty watch, watch or is it like just a combination space. of different watches? Heaven help me. This podcast ends now, but I've still got to deal with him after. If like, subscribe, be a part of our community. Watch this space. We'll be back next week. Click, Take click care. below. You can do it. Bless us.